Ukrainian Armed Forces servicemen and national security expert Ivan Vachenko explained the impact of the successful strike on Russia's Nebo-M radar station. One less radar means it's now easier for Ukrainian UAVs to fly over Russia. The Nebo-M is quite a unique system, a radar with a wide range. The Ukrainian forces took out one of the 10 left in Russia and that's a big deal. Even with those remaining stations, they don't have enough. What we're seeing now is a totally porous Russian air defense system, while our UAVs can freely fly to Moscow and beyond, hitting key targets for the Russians. Varchenko said on Espresso TV. He added that these radars are designed to detect incoming aerial threats to Russia early. How many they've lost so far isn't entirely clear. But we know Russia doesn't have many left. They're scattered across Russian territory. So by knocking out another one, 10% of their frontline coverage is gone, giving Ukrainian air systems even more freedom to locate and destroy enemy positions. And every hit like this improves our ability to find and strike such targets with precision. It's possible that more will follow, the officer stated. Recall on October the 3rd, the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces announced that Ukrainian missile units had successfully destroyed a Russian Nebo-M radar using ATACMS ballistic missiles. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko said that Nebo-M is one of the most modern radar stations in Russia. On average, its cost is somewhere around $100 million. Therefore, this is quite significant, even financial damage for the Russian army. They are not produced quickly, slowly, because they contain a large number of elements of Western production. As is known, it is difficult for Russia to obtain them now. These are exclusively contraband supplies, the expert said on air of Radio NV. He noted that such Russian radars are difficult to detect since they use a stealth mode of invisibility providing echeloned air defense, an air defense system with all the necessary information about threats in the sky. They notice both ballistic and subsonic, supersonic targets, cruise missiles. Therefore, its destruction is a serious blow, firstly, to this component, secondly, to the capabilities of Russian air defense in the relevant area to effectively monitor the airspace and, of course, also financial damage, Kovalenko added. After a lull, the topic of sending NATO troops to Ukraine has reappeared in the Western press. Following France, Britain has started talking about it again. As former UK Defence Minister Ben Wallace stated, Britain needs to send its troops to help Kyiv. This is what the Daily Telegraph writes. The former British Defence Minister believes that the West should send its military to Ukraine, but not to participate in combat, but to train Ukrainian soldiers, in particular mobilised ones. According to him, Kyiv needs to expand the criteria for mobilization and recruit as many recruits as possible who will be trained by the West but on Ukrainian territory, which will be much faster and cheaper than transporting them, for example, to the same Great Britain. According to Wallace, the British alone can train 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers to confront the Russian army. The West can train them. Britain alone could train 100 people if it wanted to. We should send our troops to help the Ukrainian army with training and maintenance. Not so that they fight, but so that they can enable the rear echelons to repair the equipment that we have all given them, the former minister stated. He also called on Western countries to increase military aid to Kyiv, thereby helping it defeat Russia. Wallace did not explain how Ukraine would defeat, given the volumes of military equipment and weapons. Recall recently, France has not ruled out sending troops to Ukraine, according to Benjamin Haddad, the French Minister for European Affairs. Paris, along with other NATO allies, have trained over 100,000 Ukrainian troops since the war started and in February, French President Emmanuel Macron said there was no consensus on deploying ground troops to Ukraine, but that nothing was excluded. NATO allies have been trying to provide military assistance to Ukraine, but the presence of boots on the ground in any form could raise fears of escalation. However, Moscow has already portrayed its invasion as a proxy war between Russia and the alliance. The French newspaper Le Monde reported in May that France could send instructors to Ukraine to train its military, following a deal agreed by Kyiv's top commander, General Alexander Syrsky.
As a debate rages about whether Western weapons should be allowed for strikes deep inside Russia, Haddad reiterated the French president's position regarding Paris's latest stance on military assistance for Ukraine. President Macron has said on several occasions that we must not exclude anything, and that still applies in particular to training missions, Haddad told German newspaper Berliner Zeitung. Israel may strike Iran's nuclear facilities in response to the attack, the New York Times reported, citing American officials. According to the publication, during the previous shelling of Israeli territory by Iran, it was possible to avoid a powerful response from Tel Aviv and strikes on Iranian nuclear facilities. The Israeli side's reaction to the missile strikes was restrained. In April, they shelled an airbase in Isfahan, a city surrounded by several important Iranian nuclear facilities. Thus, the Israelis sent a message to Tehran that next time they could target facilities valuable for the nuclear program, the The New York Times believes. U.S. officials say Israel is considering response scenarios this time that include strikes on nuclear sites, specifically the enrichment facilities at Natanz, the heart of Iran's program. It is there, north of Isfahan, that Iran synthesized its near-bomb-grade uranium, which U.S. officials say can be converted to bomb-grade in days or weeks. Striking there would take much longer to produce a nuclear weapon. Possible targets known to Sima Shine, a former head of Mossad's research and evaluation division, include oil facilities, military infrastructure, and nuclear sites. She also said it was possible that Israel could go after senior military officials, though she doubted that Iran's political echelon would be on the hit list. The question will be whether to go wider or no, Shine, who now serves as director of the Shiite Axis Research Program at Israel's Institute for National Security Studies, said. And from what I understand, there is an ongoing consultation of the cabinet, they, together with the Americans that are in a very delicate time now, a month before elections. Israeli officials have previously called for a joint strike with the United States against Iran, particularly targeting nuclear sites that Israel has long warned served as the basis of a burgeoning nuclear weapons program. Iranian officials have repeatedly denied seeking weapons of mass destruction, though officials and experts have suggested this could change if the Islamic Republic faced an existential threat.